Right, we're going to take you through a rear hub service. And this is something that you really should do if you're cleaning your bike quite often or riding through streams. Uh, the seals on these hubs are designed to take uh, the rigors of riding through streams or, or gentle cleaning with a bucket and sponge, but they aren't designed to take close-up work with a pressure washer. If you pressure wash your hubs, basically what will happen is you will push all the grease out of the hub, you'll bypass the seal with the water spray, then the water will sit in place of the grease and be held in by the seal. So they'll actually rust themselves from the inside out. So it's really not a good idea to uh, pressure wash a bicycle. Now I've taken the cassette off and with the layout, when you're taking apart a hub, there's a lot of parts to consider. So the layout really is paramount. I try to work to the left and the right of the bicycle. So we know that the gears are on the right hand side of the bicycle. So that's mirrored in my layout here. So we've got the sprockets all in order as they've come off the uh, spines of the free hub body. What we need to take off is the disc rotor. So using the Shimano lock ring tool, just to secure the tool in the lock ring, because we don't want it slipping out and damaging the lock ring, we can use the quick release skewer, slid in with a lever on the opposite side, And then attach the quick release nut. And obviously there's, there's, this only undoes one way. There's no need to hold it like we did with the cassette. So we don't need to use a chain whip or anything like that. Pop the lock ring tool on, secure it, and then you can undo it. Don't forget to take out your quick release. Okay. What I'm using here is uh, an axle vise, you can see. Make sure it's in nice and securely. Now I'm just gonna take off the disc rotor. Disc braking surfaces, this part here, don't like greasy fingers. Then make sure you lift the rotor from the center of the spider and just take it off. And put this as far away from any greasy components as you can. So we're going to dismantle the hub now and all of the dismantling takes place from the non-drive side, the disc side if you like. Most hubs nowadays they use a 15 and a 17 mil cone spanner and you need to use the cone spanners in unison. 15 on the bottom, 17 on the top. These can be quite tight sometimes put together. There we go, that wasn't too bad. But you can sometimes uh, find that you need to put a bit of uh, pressure onto the lock nut to undo it, and that's where a good sharp 17 mil is gonna pay dividends. So the layout now is really important. As you take this apart, just pay attention to which way round the components are. You notice that on this nut, that there's some serrations. Can get a little bit fiddly now. So we've got some washers that are coming off. And again, I'm paying real attention to how this is coming apart because I want it to go back together in exactly the same way. Now, if you're not sure and you have a Shimano hub like this one, what you can do is go onto Shimano's website and they have an exploded view of all of the components. And uh, that will really help you when you're going to put it back together again, if you've uh, got confused with your layout. So this part that I'm removing now is the cone nut. And you can see on here, and these are called labyrinth seals. And what they do is stop the water from entering the hub. And you can see it's just these chaps that are trying to hold back the, uh, the water from a pressure washer. Grip hold of the axle, because we're gonna need to remove the axle from the hub. And then you can just slide the axle through. And there we go, no bearings on the floor. A rear hub generally uses quarter inch size ball bearings and as a general rule there's nine per side. It's very hard to see the wear on a ball bearing so my recommendation is to replace the bearings regularly. What I'm doing here is trying to take the bearings out on each side of the, uh, the hub as per my layout, the left and the right hand side. You can find a magnet really useful for this as well 
um, just helps you to get the ball bearings out slightly more easily. When the bearings run apart, run around in the on the bearing race, uh, they they hit against each other, and there'll be very small particles of metal uh, in the grease itself. And so that's why you want to really clean out as much of the old grease as you can get get your hands on. If this little uh, bearing cover here comes out with your fingers, that's fine. But please don't go putting a screwdriver in and try to yank it out. So I'm going to use a little bit of rapid degreaser on the inside of here, just on this side, just sprayed onto the cloth to try and remove as much of the grease as I can. And that's really cleaning out the bearing surface and it's given me the opportunity to inspect the bearing surface. What I'm able to do now is I'm able to see any uh, what they call pitting or brindling from the inside here. So a bit like with the headset, we're looking inside here and sometimes pitting is where it looks like someone's really pressed the ball bearings hard on it and you can end up with that notchy sort of index feel from your hub. This one's fine. Uh, that's ready for us now to pop some grease back onto and put some new bearings in. So we're going to do the same with the other side. This is what's called the free hub body, this part here. If your free hub body is, uh, is broken, you'll know because um, it will free wheel both ways. And so you won't be able to get any drive from your bike. And that's the, the free hub body bolt. And we're going to use a 10 millimeter Allen key just to remove this. We can just undo. This is a uh, eight speed bike that we have on this one. So it's going to be an eight speed free hub body. Be sure to get the right one. And this is the free hub body bolt that's come out. See the threads are very fine on this and this actually screws into the hub. And this does need to be done up tight, but as the threads are very fine, we want to make sure that it's not done up too tightly. Inside the splines where the free hub body goes, so it is worthwhile giving it a good clean out from round here. And that's now ready to pop back in again. Quick look at the threads inside. Yeah, that's fine. We've got a, a very fine coating of grease on the free hub body bolt. We can slot that through. There's a little bit of oil on the, the bottom of the ratchets. This is what makes the click of the hub. And sometimes it can sound quite graunchy. So it's a good idea just to give it a little clean around here and just pop a bit of fine oil onto here and that should keep it running nice and sweetly. You can feel that locate into the splines. And we can use a 10 millimeter to just do up the free hub body bolt. Probably about 25 to 30 newton meters. So it's pretty tight. And if you over tighten it, it will just spin and then you've wrecked the hub shell and you'll have to buy a new hub. Now, I'm going to replace the ball bearings in this. I know that it uses nine per side, quarter inch size, and I've got some of those ready for me to put in. Don't forget as well to inspect the, uh, the cone nuts for damage as well. So we're going to reset the cone and the lock nuts. There'll be a gap of between five and a half and six millimetres on the opposite side of the hub as well. There we go, that's ideal. Make sure these are locked together nice and tightly because you don't want these to move. This is your fixed side. So this is one easy way for me to tell which side should be my fixed side, which is the drive side. Remember, we took it, took it out from. And you can see that there's good thread here and good thread here, but not so much thread here. And so that indicates to me that it's the drive side. OK. So that's going to be my fixed side. Reset to between five and a half to six millimeters. So I'm going to clamp these together, make sure they're nice and tight. And now I can pipe some grease onto the bearing surfaces, slide the axle through, try and give the hub a fighting chance. I try and pop in a good coating of grease. And this is going to hold the bearings when you put them in as well. Hold the wheel at sort of 45 degrees, about that sort of angle. And then when you drop them in, you're going to drop them onto the race itself and not through the middle. Doesn't always work, but it's a, it's a good tip. And drop the ball bearings onto the bearing race. And the grease, got a good quality grease, will hold them. You can see, just push them onto the grease and turn the wheel around as you go. 
If you do find one, I'm just going to show you a tool now that if you do drop one on the inside, is a really useful tool for getting the bearing out. It's a magnet and it's a telescopic magnet. There we go, I've got more than one, that's okay. And then we're going to pipe the grease over the top. There we go, same on the other side. Just push the uh, grease onto the bearings. Just be careful with them. You'll feel the bearings seat themselves in the race as well. Turn the hub over and put the bearings in the other side. A little bit fiddly this one, takes a bit of patience. Lots of cups of tea. So if you've got the wheel at a decent angle, they should just fall onto the race. And there always looks like there's room to put one more bearing. Don't be tempted to go and get a slightly smaller ball bearing and dropping it, drop it in because what will happen is you'll, uh, you'll crowd the other bearings that are in there that are designed to have their own space and you'll actually cause damage to the, uh, to the rest of the bearings. Put some grease over the top. There we go. Work that in. And now I can drop the axle through from the drive side. Try not to hook a bearing on the way through. Settle it onto the bearings. Hold the axle from this side. That's going to stop the, uh, the axle falling out, allow you to put it back into the vise. You can reinstall the other cone nuts. And you're just looking for this to be finger tight. Okay, just to remove the play from the bearings. It doesn't need to be excruciatingly tight, otherwise your axle won't turn. I usually keep going until I can feel the pressure on the bearings by my fingers. And then I back it off about a quarter of a turn. Put the other washers on now. When you're putting the lock nut on, you want to make sure that you hold the cone nut because as you tighten this, you'll actually tighten the cone nut as well. So this is where we bring the cone spanners into play. So, okay. So now we can take, no bearings are going to go anywhere now, so we can confidently take the wheel out of the axle vise and we can check the operation, check that it spins smoothly. I'm wobbling the axle there to see if I can feel any play. Now, if you can feel the sort of play that you're not sure whether it's the bones in your hand that are moving or whether there's play in the, in the axle, then that's okay because when you do up the quick release, you'll actually tighten the hub together. But it's literally, it's a very small amount of play. That's actually perfect. I can't feel any, any play in that, that's ideal. So what we can do now is put the cassette back on. So a little bit of anti-seize onto the free hub body splines. We can reinstall the cassette, reinstall the disc rotor, and this wheel will be ready to go. Reinstall the lock ring. Again, we tighten this to about 40 newton meters, nice and tightly. And then the same for our disc rotor. You could put a very light coating if you're worried of anti-seize onto the, uh, the splines here. And you can see there's, this one's been taken off before, so there's enough on there, so I won't apply any more. We don't want anti-seize on our disc rotor. Slide the disc rotor on. Pop your lock ring back on. Again, 40 newton meters is the torque for this if you have a torque wrench. We can slide through the quick release skewer from the drive side. Now the quick release skewer will actually pick up a little bit of grease from the end of the axle. So although I didn't grease that there, it's probably good practice just to put a very fine coating of grease on that. And there we go, that wheel's ready to be put back into the bicycle. And that's ready to, uh, to go through a few more streams now. And that's it.